So this video is going to be a little bit different. Last week I reviewed the Dell Canvas and I reviewed it from the point of view of an illustrator. This week I'm going to be looking at the Dell Canvas and the Dell Precision together, but I'm going to be looking at these from the point of view of a video producer because I sit around here and I make videos. Now I should point out I am not a pro video producer. I've done one of these every single week, sometimes more for two years. So I've learned a thing or two as I go. Uh, but Dell is is shooting to make the the canvas more than just an illustration device. They want to use it for other things. So they wanted my thoughts on this. And since they were willing to send me the precision to review as well, I thought, yeah, let's do it. Let's take a look at that. A couple months ago, I said this. If I was buying right now, Windows would be the way that I'd go. It was a little bit of a rant against Apple. What I want is power and flexibility. And that's not something that Apple really focuses on. I mean, they have the Mac Pro, hasn't been updated in years really super expensive. I want something in between. I want something that's powerful, affordable, flexible. I want a Windows computer. So Dell saw the video and they said, okay, let's take you up on that. Let's see what you think. And that's what this video is about. The precision itself is the most beautiful screen I have ever used. I'm not saying that because Dell sent it to me. It truly is a beautiful screen. It is 27 inches wide. That is big and it is full 4K. That is a lot of pixels. It's shiny, it's colorful. Yeah, it's something else. There is one little downside to this. The canvas, which I reviewed last week, is only a QHD screen. It's not as high resolution as the 4K screen on the Precision. And since the canvas is kind of meant to sit directly against the Precision, so you're looking at the Precision and then you're looking down at the canvas, the canvas screen doesn't look nearly as good as the Precision screen. That's not to say that the canvas screen isn't good. It's just compared to the Precision screen when it's sitting right next to it, it doesn't look as good. The other thing that impressed me were the speakers that come on the front of it. They they sounded pretty good. I'm not an audiophile, so I don't know much about audio, you know, but I, I just started using it and I was listening to the speakers. They're not tinny. They don't sound like laptop speakers. They sound like decent speakers. The one knock I have against the hardware is the keyboard and the mouse that it comes with. The Precision in general feels like a premium device. You know, you got this large screen that's beautiful. You've got these great speakers, but the keyboard and mouse just feel like they were just grabbed off the shelf. Performance wise, I liked it. I'm not a benchmark guy. If I took a whole bunch of benchmarks, I wouldn't know what to do with them or what to compare them to. I'm a user experience guy and overall faster is better. I was using these mostly for video. And so that was the biggest thing I noticed on my MacBook Pro. If I export a video, like a 10 minute video, it's gonna take about 10 minutes to export, maybe 12 minutes. On this, if I take a 10 minute video, it's gonna take three or four minutes to export. So it's exporting these things much faster. So I can obviously see from you know a performance angle, that's kind of what I'm going for. I want my video stuff to move a little faster. Okay, a lot faster. The precision lets out a low hum. It's not much. You're definitely gonna notice when it's on. When you touch like the canvas or the mouse, it immediately boots up. I've noticed on my surface, sometimes there's a little bit of lag or it has to think. I haven't had that problem at all with the precision. Every time I just even, you know, lightly brush against the canvas, it like, you hear that little hum and the screen just pops on immediately. At first I thought this was like the internal fan and I thought, oh, that's not too, you know, noisy for an internal fan. But then when I was processing video, I heard the internal fan, that thing is loud. The good news here is the only time I heard the internal fan is when I was processing video. I was running some games on it. Uh, my The games I was running were like Skyrim, which is obviously several years old. It was running it at max settings on a 4K screen though. The fan did not kick on when I was running the game, but it did kick on when I was processing video. So if you're just using this for like day-to-day -day stuff, you're not gonna hear the fan, you're not gonna notice that. All right, let's talk a little bit about this two-screen setup thing. There is some software that the Canvas comes with that is designed to make the two-screen thing work a little bit better. I never really settled into a good flow. More on that in a minute. So first of all, there's software that lets you calibrate the pen. That's the fun part. There's also something called Canvas Layout and Canvas Palette software, and also something called Stardock Fences. The Canvas Palette is a little more interesting. You can put like shortcuts on it to apps or function keys or pretty much anything you want. There are also some other handy dandy things that come with the Canvas. For example, you can pull up a software keyboard. You can pull up a software like touchpad to replace your mouse, turn it into kind of a laptop. So if you wanna, you know, play with the upper screen while using the bottom screen, you can do that. 
The one problem that I had with the software keyboard is oftentimes, uh, like I'd have my web browser up on the other screen and I'd pull up the software keyboard to use it and, and that software keyboard would appear on the other screen and I'd have to drag it down before I could type on it. There always kind of was a focus difference between the two screens that I was using and I wasn't sure you know, how to balance that out and how to make that work properly for me. And it wanted, it made me want to just use the standard keyboard. And like I mentioned in my video last week when I was reviewing the canvas, I, uh, I had to rearrange my desks. And when you have two giant 27 inch monitors on your desk, it doesn't really leave you much room for your keyboard. I ended up setting my keyboard directly, you know, on the canvas itself. Let's talk about this. This is the totem. It is a dial type thing, totally customizable for art. I used it to change my brush sizes to zoom in and out. Um, I was having a harder time trying to find something to do with it when I was like doing video. I, I didn't really kind of find a flow with it. Since it is customizable, I could set it to do just about anything I wanted. And I tried a different customizations just to see what I could do. So this is the part of the video where I want to, you know, kind of talk about my workflow as a video production person. I am completely and totally self-taught. I've gone into Adobe Premiere Pro. It's not called Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere. CC, I don't know. My point is, is I'm self-taught, uh, uh, so I don't know what I'm doing right, what I could do, be doing better every so often I watch other people's tutorials and I pick up a little here and there. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt as far as my process, but I'm gonna explain it anyway because it makes it easier to explain how I use the canvas and the precision together. So I edit video a lot faster than I used to and the main reason I do is because of shortcuts. If I have, I don't know, let's say uh, I'll, I'll record video, something like this. I'll get a half hour worth of video, I'll record it on my phone, I pull it off, and I cut it down to like a 10 minute video. To do this, to get 10 minutes of video out of a half hour of video, takes me probably an hour to an hour and a half. And then I spend another hour, an hour and a half taking other footage that I've shot with my phone and splicing it over. So a 10 minute video is probably like three hours of work for me. And this is how I do it. I write a script and then I go, I read a line, I memorize that line. And then if I flutter, ah, I've messed it up. And then if I mess up the line, I just cut it in like this. So it looks like I'm really smart and I know what I'm talking about, but I don't, I just memorize one line. See, see what I did there? I end up editing off of the audio cues. I don't even look at the video when I'm editing because I can see like in the audio waves, like how I should be editing it. I splice it on in and I stick it in there. To splice it in, what do I do? I use keyboard shortcuts. One finger, my thumb usually, rests on the I key of my keyboard. This finger rests on the O key. So I stands for in, I tap in, that's where I start my cut. I tap out after I've listened to that and if I edit it, if I splice it at the right place, I then swipe down to the comma and then I keep playing that clip. And so I've got it, so I'm just listening and I'm like, okay, that sounds like a good take. In, out, comma, keep listening. In, out, comma. I really am using the keyboard shortcuts. That's kind of part of my flow. And if I don't like a take, then I yank that take out anyway. That's that's how I edit video. So I'm really dependent on the shortcut keys. So when I was using like the canvas, I, you know, I was trying to figure out, can I do that with the totem, right? Like maybe I sent the I to dial this way and the O to dial that way. And I tapped down to kind of splice in. That kind of worked. And then I could use the pen to kind of go in there and move stuff around if I need to. Um, it it kind of worked, but it was a little bit awkward. I also tried the software keyboard a little bit. You know, maybe I'd tap the I and the O and the comma on the software keyboard and, and, and use the mouse and get the other keyboard out of the way. But the problem with that is I like resting my hand on the keyboard because I don't have to look at it. It's hard to rest your hand on a software keyboard because if you're resting it on that I, it's just gonna keep hitting I over and over again. The one thing I did really like is having all of that screen real estate. When you're editing video, you've got a lot going on. I only use four or five layers at a time, even on my more complicated videos but I could see like if you're editing a lot of stuff like you'd have layers upon layers upon layers and being able to use a giant 27 inch screen to put all of those layers on dude that would be awesome but for me I don't really want it to be looking down at it I think where I'd rather have that screen is like next to the other screen Ultimately, I loved having that screen real estate. I just wasn't really a fan of where that screen real estate was. And I didn't use this for much. I've only edited two videos on this thing. So maybe spent five or six hours, seven hours, you know, with it all together. So maybe that's not enough time to get used to a completely new work workflow. 
So I mentioned this in my Canvas review last week, but I think it's worth saying again. Overall, I feel like there's some really cool hardware things going on here. When you're talking about the totem, when you're talking about touch screens, when you're talking about the size of the screen, all of that is cool, but the software hasn't really ca caught up to that hardware yet. And I think we've seen, like with an app like Procreate on the iPad or Sketchable for drawing, if the software is built to be used with a touchscreen, it, it can work really well if you kind of have that in mind when you're designing it. But if you're going backwards to it and you're saying, okay, well, we designed the software years ago, we've kind of refined it over time, and now there's these new tools, so let's retrofit it it's always gonna feel a little bit clumsy. It's never gonna feel like it flows as well as you think it should, or it doesn't flow as well as the keyboard and mouse did. And so you wanna always go back to that. Now that's just talking about video. If we're talking about art, it is already there. I mean, we, we've already established a workflow for that. Like I said, see my other Canvas review from last week where I'm talking about art and illustration. Really from a video standpoint, or using this for, you know, kind of day-to-day -day interaction computing, uh, I think we have to let the software catch up with the hardware. So this was a lot of like odds and ends I kind of piled into one video to kind of give my overall impressions. Still, like I said, I like the hardware. Workflow standpoint, still getting used to it. I never really found anything that really vibed with me from a video standpoint. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. Also, if you see anything in my workflow here where you're like, whoa, Brad has got this really long, let me know, because I'm always trying to get better at video. I'm always trying to figure this stuff out and get more efficient. So that's all I've got for this week. I like like to thank everybody who supports me. If you'd like to uh, see any of my drawing reviews or anything, check that down in the description below. That's all I've gotten. I'd like to thank my supporters over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys in a couple of days.